I catch up with Bob Brown of B Cubed Press at Norwest Con. Norwest Con is an annual science fiction convention in the Seattle area. So you you're, you have a press called B Cubed. Mm-hmm. Right, yes, B Cubed. Can you tell me about that name? Yeah, be cute. That was very simple about brown books. Oh, there we go. Um, I, I wish I could go to something deeper. I wanted it to, to be less neutral because I resisted the urge to call it Snowflake Press. Right. Uh, you might want to explain that, the, the Snowflakes. The Snowflakes. Like well, as uh, anybody who goes on Facebook knows, that one of the uh, standard pejoratives used by conservatives for uh, liberals, um, but he just said, you're just a bunch of snowflakes. Hmm. And uh, he had submitted a story. It was not a terrible story. It wasn't a great story. It needed some work, but... I had read it and said, you know, I'm not rejecting it, I'm holding it. And then he started reading because uh, I established what we called uh, just a page. Can you set the situation a little differently? You said you handed him a story by, by in person and then he... No, he, he submitted. Okay. I, uh, nobody uh, with a sane mind believed that this person called Donald Trump was fit to become the President of the United States mm-hmm. uh, between his uh, uh, views on women, his views on immigration, his views on just basically uh, people, his, his uh, viewing of uh, human beings and other companies as resources to be harvested for his own benefit. Right. Uh, it, it was beyond the pale that this man could ever right. become president. Most, many of my friends went into a major funk when we saw that all those years of voter suppression techniques, gerrymandering, and uh, other had resulted in him winning, that as the inauguration approached, I couldn't help it, I wrote a story. And I uh, posted it on inauguration uh, the day before the inauguration about a. Uh, what you posted it, on, on Facebook? On Facebook, just as a Facebook. To your, your, your B, is this the the B? B cube didn't even exist okay, in, uh, in January twenty third, January twenty first, two thousand seventeen. B cube didn't exist. Uh, I had no plans, no ideas. I was happily going along as a writer. Uh, okay. Minding your own business until something's going on that you can't ignore, right? <laughs> yes. Yes. And so I posted the story. People said, wow, this is good. You should go put an anthology together uh, about this. I didn't know any publishers that did anthologies that I was mm-hmm. willing to go pitch this to. And so I said, okay, I'll do it. Mm-hmm. Because I, I, I had the skill set. And so uh, I went online, registered uh, the domain name, B-Cubed. I bought a business license. And I set up a uh, Alternative uh, Truths Anthology Facebook page. And I said, guys, send me your stories. <laughs> And next thing I know, I had 60 or 70 stories showing up in my mailbox. And uh, I said, I want to get this out in 100 days. Those of you not in the publishing business, this is a big deal. It's in 100 days, he's going to put together a cover, some artwork for the cover. He's going to get authors listed on the back. He's going to get their stories edited. He's going to get the book typeset. He's going to find a way to print it. He's going to find a way to distribute it. In other words... Bob must have an ace up his sleeve. And uh, so I called up uh, Irene Radford. She uh, is a uh, best known for The Last Dragon, one of her first books. But uh, as she said when she read her piece on accepting her Lifetime Achievement Award from the Lamont Writers Group, that uh, even then she had over 20 books out, and now she's closer to 30. She's edited many anthologies. She has uh, written many short stories. And she and I have written, even written a novel together. And... Uh, so I said, hey, you want on board? And she said, sure. And I said, well, we need to have it out on the, to, to mark the first 100 days. And she laughed at me and said, you can't put an anthology out in 100 days. I, said, <laughs> I would say the same thing. <laughs> and I, I said, yeah, we can. And so we did it. Nice. Uh, and uh, that's how BQ Press was born. And there was so much coming in that said that we loved. And they said, well, are you going to put volume two? And I said, I don't know. You know, this is, not, this is a huge amount of work. And then I'm at work that day after we released BQ. And my daughter says, you know, you're number one. Uh, and I said, what do you mean? I said, you're number one on Amazon uh, uh, science fiction anthologies. Nice. And uh, you're number two in uh, the uh, political fiction category. Nice. And uh, I was flabbergasted. I, I mean, yes, we did reasonable promotion, 
But clearly we hit a nerve. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, the nerve we hit kept us there for about two weeks. And uh, we got to do something that uh, very few science fiction anthologies from a small micro press out of my back room uh, in my house in Kiona. We watched 100 days, yeah. Yeah, had, uh, that we put together in 100 days, and first time I'd ever formatted an anthology. Now, there were other factors, though. When we did it, I said, look, this can't be just about me. It can't be just about this. Um, and so we set up our contract with the writers that said, we will give a share, an equal share of what goes to any writer to the uh, ACLU of Washington. Mm -hmm. And this woman named Vonda McIntyre, who is a wonderful writer of her own right, well-loved writer, uh, she said, hey, let me do your ebook formatting for you. And uh, by the way, that share that I would get for the uh, ebook formatting, I want it to go to the ACLU too. Cool. And then Louise Marley, who is uh, uh, an absolute marvelous writer, she said, I want my share to go. Bruno Lombardi mm -hmm. said, I want my share to go. Uh, Bobby Lee Featherston said, I want my share to go. And uh, we spent uh, the amount of money it took to get the book out. And then within 12 hours of it being on the street, yeah. we had earned out. Nice. And uh, wow. we were lucky. We have sent almost $600 to the uh, ACLU uh, from this book alone. Uh -huh. And uh, the same is in the contract that we have for more alternative truths, which earned out in January. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it didn't sell out as quickly. We hit around Christmas when other people had other things that they were doing, mm -hmm. but um, it earned out and we, it'll, it will be sending money to the ACLU. All future publications in the alternative series will be sending money to the ACLU. Mm -hmm. And uh, we don't, uh, the ACLU doesn't post our book on their webpage or any of that stuff. We're not, right. and it's not that type. It is a quiet, um, support that also means that uh, we've got Hugo award-winning writers that are submitting for us. Jane Yolen, who is a poet at heart, best known for many of her, well, she's, she's a major force in her own right. She writes beautiful poetry. She submitted poems for us. Performing this weekend as the musical guest mm -hmm. is Alexander James Adams. Okay. Alexander James Adams did the cover art for this. Now you asked about the snowflakes right. that dominate the cover. Every book has, in the alternative series, has a snowflake uh, theme in it. The, the More Alternative Truths cover, uh, that was uh, uh, an artist by the name of C. Tom Coyle. She gave us her own vision of the cover and we liked that because in every case I've sent my vision of the cover to the artist mm. and they've said thank you for sharing mm. and they've sent me back a much better cover but they've stayed true to the theme. It is a uh, fantastic to get to work with all of these people that have their, they have a vision mm -hmm. that every, their vision is just as strong as my vision. And I find out that there's room at the table for everybody's vision on this, because one thing I've learned through uh, uh, 30 years of doing what I do has been that if you think that just because you're the manager or you're the in charge of a project, that you're the most knowledgeable person on these processes, you will have a failed project and a failed process. Right. So you want to get people committed to it, taking shared ownership so they'll help make it more successful? This is shared ownership because what we do is we pay the writer, and then we say, after that, there's, it's on the share system. So the Snowflake team on the cover came when we received a, not a terrible story, right. uh, from a, a person who was uh, far more conservative viewpoint and yet he submitted something that's interesting then he submitted it uh but he didn't he had just read the open call and uh so when he submitted it i looked at it i didn't reject it i thought it was a uh, um, a story that could be could find its way into the book mm. and then he went to our project page on facebook where all of the other writers were sharing their perspectives and providing their feedback on the covers and his uh email was you're just a bunch of snowflakes <laughs> i want to unsubmit my story <laughs> So, so what happens? He submitted this something, and then later he read further on the web page and realized, oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> Maybe he felt like he was in bed with the enemy or something at that point. <laughs> something to that type. And I said, I sent him back a note that said, look, if, if you're worried about that, I, uh, I still am willing to consider your story. You know, it's, it's about the work. Uh -huh. And he was adamant, that, again, that and he got a little bit more adamant, that we were a bunch of snowflakes. 
And I thought about that. You know, you're right. We are a bunch of snowflakes, but we are not that kind of snowflake. Uh, when you get enough snowflakes together, you call it a blizzard. <laughs> and uh, I can tell you, come November, we're going to see a blizzard in this country. And uh, so then I put together and I said, I think I want an orange cover and I want snowflakes on it. Uh -huh. And I drafted up what my vision was and I sent it to Alex. That's Alexander James Adams. Okay. And uh, he was on travel. And he had nothing but a tiny little borrowed notebook. He wasn't at his home where he designs all of his album covers and the like. Mm -hmm. But he sent back some beautiful work. Very plain, but quality covers that will forever have the Snowflake logo. Cool. I love that. It came from, the, uh, it came from outside, the, in the outside world. Somebody made some comment that was actually at, at one point wanting to be part of it and then changed their mind, but then they, they, they've, they've created this, uh, this bit of an art movement. <laughs> now here, here is a, the, our official patch. Nice. We call that the warrior snowflake patch. Right, right. It is an image of a snowflake on an orange background with a sword penetrating it. That came from uh, Susan McDonald. She wrote a wonderful story about King Arthur returning to save England, and the event that was causing his return was the landing of Air Force One uh, with the new president aboard. It has it caught fire, and we had originally done it as the snowflake or the sword and the snowflake uh, as a as a take on sword and the stone from the Arthurian legends. But uh, they saw it as the warrior snowflake with the sword penetrating the snowflake raised over your head as a uh, uh, call to battle. Uh, and as, so as you go look at the way the snowflake is worn on the black berets, uh -huh. uh, because there were two berets you saw them last night. So, so at Norwest Con, there's people with berets and snowflakes uh, emblems on their berets. Yes, there are. And uh, uh, they are prized possessions. You see them on jackets, you see them on shirts. Every writer, I love my writers, okay? I call them my writers and they can, they can say, okay, you know, we don't need the paternal approach, but, um, you know, I, I can't help but think about it because they made this happen. They, they're the ones that sit down in front of their keyboards, put their butt in their chair, their fingers on the keyboards, and hit submit, and uh, they pulled it all together. They're the people that promoted it. Karen Anderson, uh, she's the one that said, Bob, you need a web page. Bob, you need to do this. Uh, Bob, let me help you here. Let me go blog this. And uh, she helped draft the press releases. You know, it was everybody just stepped in and did what they could do. And uh, that's why I say I... I might be the uh, guy who's got his name on there uh, for it, but mm -hmm. it was uh, communal. Nice. And uh, we are happy that it's communal, and we try and keep it that way. Next episode, we're going to peel back the mists around the mysterious Bob Brown and learn about his uh, stint at NPR Radio.